Hi, I'm Squashed Out, and today we're gonna make lo fi. So, this is gonna be a beginner lo fi tutorial, only stock plugins, but we're just gonna use samples and loops uh, just to show you kind of how far you can take basic sequencing knowledge and, and some of the stuff we'll talk about in the video. All right, so a really easy way to tell what BPM a genre or song is, if you don't know, is to use tap tempo in your DAW, which you can find up here. Tap, tap, tap. If we go back in and play a tune. Okay, so that was that was uh, 80 BPM. I'm going to start going through all the samples that I've already purchased. That could be sick. We could go for a slightly more up-tempo one. What happens if we maybe take this one and kind of stretch it out a little bit? So just adjust the tempo here. Oh yeah, already more uh, lo-fi. Cool, you know what, that's good. So now we're gonna do some drum stuff. So one stock way in Ableton that you can get some lo-fi vibes is messing with the frequency shifter knob. Just to get a little bit of warble. So if you kind of automate that, you know, from time to time, it can be pretty spicy. Next thing we should go over is the Midnight EQ3 preset. Kind of makes it sound like uh, an old telephone or, you know. Oh, and then it's really useful when you map all the knobs to a macro knob by control command G and basically just mapping them so that you can just with one knob uh, basically have a dry wet effect. And then um, the echo plugin is also good for like fluttery type stuff. Getting the pitch to kind of randomly move around a little bit. It sounds really good if you set it to random uh, and then just do it a tiny bit. And I think what we'll do too is we're going to throw this in a audio effect rack so that we can parallel process it. So we can keep the normal signal nice and you know the pitch is correct and all that. But then we're going to layer in some of the flutter along with some other effects. Maybe do a bit of a band pass. Oh, do a little bit of erosion. So we're going to put those some spots in, uh, in the chain. And this is what it sounds like on just the flutter chain. So we're going to automate in the lo-fi effect here, just so we can start off more lo-fi and then have a little bit of a call and response when the beat comes in. So we're also going to do the same thing uh, with some reverb, we're going to start off 100% and then kind of have it all washed out and far away from us and then make it feel like it's coming closer with turning the dry wet down on the reverb. Another pretty lo-fi thing is to have like just basic shapes like this and uh, you know mix in some a little bit of erosion and stuff. If you play a chord it can sound really cool just from all the dissonance from the distortion. So I'm gonna get some MIDI down MIDI, MIDI down here, some notes. Okay, so if, let's say if you kind of want something that kind of feel far away and kind of washed out, like, you know, 100% reverb, but you also kind of want it to be a little closer to you, a little bit more beefy, you can pair it with something like OTT, um, or for those who aren't in Ableton, it just multiband compression will help. And these are kind of approximately the settings that work for me. Oh yeah, another really cool um, kind of lo-fi glitchy kind of thing is to open up an auto pan and set it to the random setting and uh, mess around with the uh, the width, the rate, and the and the shape and the amount obviously um, to kind of dial in how you want it. You can have a pretty pretty glitchy sounding or just a little bit more subtle. And you can hear once we have it back in the mix, it sounds really cool. So another thing that really helps with lo-fi and getting kind of like the warm, you know, vibe or feeling is saturation um, and a lot of it. So here's a already processed snare by the excellent sound guys who, who do really good stuff, by the way. Um, 
And basically, I'm just going to saturate it and kind of A, B, and you'll be able to see how much louder it gets without the gain actually going up that much. So without saturation and without me messing with the sample, it's hitting at minus 1.73 dB. Check this out. With saturation, it gets way louder and the peak volume actually goes down to minus 2.73. If we were trying to get the same loudness of just turning the volume up, it would start to clip 3 or 4 dB in the red. You can also use something like Yulene Loudness, which is free, to kind of measure your LUFS uh, and your true peak. LUFS is like the average loudness, sorta. Not exactly, but kinda. Oh, and then another stock thing in Ableton that's kind of cool for some lo-fi stuff is there's a chorus preset called Yo Man that um, anybody who makes dubstep will ha has heard of. I just realized it's got a kind of a cool, I'm not sure what the proper term is, but that there's a certain kind of like uh, chorus, uh, like retro vintage chorus. And um, it sounds, at least in this context, a lot like that. You can hear it's kind of got that warbly effect. So obviously we got to get an 808 in here. I'm gonna make a little pattern with it. So now let's um, apply some of the stuff we've learned to kind of make a lo-fi-ish outro. So I have a real song coming out, or just came out, um, and basically you should check it out if you like music that's not related to lo-fi at all. It's called Sewer Yoink. <laughs> 